Today, I'm going to answer some frequently asked questions of Kathy's coaching and consulting. Let's get into the episode. Question number one. I notice you've made significant changes inside your business. What are you doing now that makes it so different? Back in February of 2024, I joined a mastermind with Joseph Rodriguez, the flow-based prosperity mastermind to be specific. That mastermind changed my life dramatically. Those people inside there have helped me tremendously. For example, you may or may not know this, but I have taken a lot of courses online in coaching and course creation, and I've been misled by many of those coaches. They're out for money. I, I don't trust anybody. and. Inside this mastermind, I found a wonderful person and I trusted him. I trusted him completely. And the course I'm taking is expensive, but let me tell you something. The light bulbs that go off over my head every time I meet with them is tremendous and it's made a drastic difference in my life. So I'm going to include links in the description below to my coach, Gio. Shout out to him and also to the mastermind because what's happened inside the mastermind is every person gets on there and discusses and these discussions are so impactful because what happens is I put myself in every story that comes out and I'm like, oh, I can relate to that. I can relate to that. And it's very beneficial the way that Joseph coaches us and teaches us. So that's helped. My having the course creation that I've taken with Geo has given me a place to put my business where it makes sense. So I'm a corporate wellness consultant and also a coach for corporate wellness professionals. And I've been doing that for a long time. So I'm making sort of a pivot into coaching and this type of coaching. So now I have a place to present my offers where before I was really unsure of how to present my offers. Um, now I'm very sure of how to present my offers. And so that's the main change that's taken place in my business. Again, that started in February of 2024, and it's transpired to now, which is August of 2024. And the impact it's made in my life and my business is tremendous. I interrupt this episode to give you some free resources in Kathy's Coaching and Consulting. Number one, I do corporate wellness and consulting. I will have a link to that on my website, as well as I do reality transurfing, coaching and consulting. No, just coaching. And I also do fitness training and coaching. And I will have a link to all three of them in the show notes and description below. But I will also have them on the screen right here. And let's get back into the episode. So question number two. How long have you been dating Eddie and when are you getting married? This is one of my most frequently asked questions just in general in my life. And I have been dating Eddie in December of 2024. It'll be 11 years. Oh my gosh. What's great about Eddie is we complement each other. And I know that sounds cliche or whatever, but he and I balance each other out. Eddie is very, very funny. He keeps me laughing all the time. And when he's not making me laugh, I know something's wrong. So he, you know, we all have moods and we all have issues and we balance each other out in that way. He's very, very kind. And he has two girls. I have two boys. So our families blend together great. Granted, they're adult children now, but we blend together very, very well. And his family is my family. I'm very blessed to have that. 
So when are we getting married? Well, you know, I really had a bad marriage before, as you may know, and that I just don't need that in my life. I don't need that validation to say that this is what we are. I prefer to keep my last name because it's the same as my children. So I don't need that validation, I guess. But we don't need to get married. Why ruin a good thing? All right, I got to go let Rusty in. So hold on one second. I'll be right back. So here's Rusty. It's just a little guy. I know. I have a question about him too <laughs> that I will answer right now. So I do have a question on here about Rusty. This is one of my most frequently asked questions about Rusty. So the question is, how old is Rusty? Would you quit barking? This a video we're recording right now. We, we love hearing from you, but that's okay. He barks when people come into the gym, when things like that. Anyways, let's get to how old Rusty is. I really don't know how old he is. I have had him since March of 2012. And I think he was about a year old at the time. And so I guess that makes him 13. And I think that's like 98 years old and people years. Rusty is in very good health. I take very good care of him. I'm part of this concierge club at my vet, which means I pay so much a month and I can take him in anytime I need to. And only extra charges is the medicine. And so I love my vet. They're so wonderful. And that's a good thing for an older dog because you want to get them taken care of right, right away. And so recently he got really kind of under the weather and it was on the weekend and I made an appointment with the vet at one o'clock, but I wanted to get him in quicker because I had a busy day that day. And so I called them and they go, yeah, just bring him in at 11. And I'm like, okay, great. They were going to squeeze him in. Well, they got him right in and took care of him. What I found out was that dogs in my area, I live in the Houston area. We got hit by the hurricane in early July. And um, I do have a video on that, by the way, on how I dealt with the hurricane using reality transurfing. But Anyways, so he said that the hurricane brought in some kind of bacteria and it rained and rained and rained for most of July. And so because the ground was so saturated and because there were so many weird smells, he was always smelling the grass, just always smelling the grass everywhere we went. And so the, the vet said that the storm brought in some kinds of bacteria. He'd been seeing a lot of what Rusty was dealing with. We put him on medication. He started feeling better right away. And because he's older, I keep an eye out on his health. And yeah, Rusty goes to work with me almost every day. He's like my sidekick. And I love it because what happens is we'll walk into a room and everybody says hi to me. And then they see him and it kind of takes the t distraction off of me. Not that I don't mind being the center of attention, you know. But uh, people love him. And I love that, uh, like I say on his Instagram profile, that he's um, a daily dose of ser oxytocin relief, not serotonin. Although serotonin is released, but more oxytocin is. And oxytocin lasts longer than serotonin. All right. This is not that kind of discussion. Let's get to the next question. The next question I have is, what does your fitness routine look like? So my fitness routine kind of got in a funk, especially through the summer, because in the summertime, on Tuesdays and Fridays, I go to work at OcuSoft early in the morning to teach circuit training classes to people whose kids are out of school for the summer and their schedules are more flexible and they're able to come in early. And I work out early in the morning. I go to Planet Fitness. I do red light therapy. I do my workout. I do a little bit of cardio. And then I'll go into my strength training depending on what workout it is. I have my workout split set up. I do 
legs and glutes. I do shoulders and abs. Those two are probably my favorite workouts. Sometimes I'll do those twice a week, depending on what I have. And then I do back and biceps and I do chest and triceps. And what I do is supersets. So supersets are one of the best things you can do in your workout. First of all, it gets you through your workout quicker. Second of all, what a superset is, is two exercises back to back. So if I'm training training chest and triceps, I'll do a chest press and a tricep kickback. I'll bring dumbbells over to the chest press machine, whatever I happen to be doing. But I find it's very beneficial. And the studies I've done in my continued education on hormones and hormone balance is supersets are one of the best ways to get more HGH release or human growth hormone release, which balances out the hormones. That's a whole episode I could talk about forever. So let's get to the next question. Are you taking any new fitness clients? So yes, I am, but very, very few. I'm focused more on my corporate wellness consulting business. And so I'm taking a few fitness clients in the Houston area. So yes, I am. And what I do with my fitness clients in the Houston area is I'll coach them on the phone, and if they need to train with me, they'll work out at Planet Fitness either with me as my guest or their member there, and I show them how to use the Planet Fitness area. And one of the coolest clients I just trained was a gal who worked as Jim Crane, the owner of the Houston Astros, his personal assistant. But we're not going to talk about the Houston Astros right now because I'm really mad at them. And let's go to the next question. <laughs> oh, I love this question. What is your favorite thing about your job as the wellness and fitness director at Ocusoft? Ironically, my favorite thing about my job is personal training and the circuit training classes that I do teach. And I love it. And I say it's ironic because I'm like weaning myself off of that. Um, I don't want to be in the gym forever. I want to focus more helping companies, helping corporate wellness directors, helping other human resources directors incorporate a corporate wellness program. And actually, personal training is probably the smallest part of my job that I do at OcuSoft. But it is one of my favorites because what happens is when I'm training people, they start telling me things that are going on. Most times it's like just a conversation. I'm doing the workouts for them. I have them written down on the wall. I will have a picture on my video of what my week's workouts look like, how I have them written down and that kind of thing. But when um, I'm personal training, I find out things that are going on inside the company. Maybe I could help somebody um, improve on something or help a, ma a manager deal with something that's going on inside there. It's almost like I'm an undercover boss because, what, you know, and actually when I teach other corporate wellness consultants, I teach them to use this as a, an asset that you have inside your corporate wellness program because when you are training and if you're a personal trainer, you know what I'm talking about. It's like being a hairdresser. People just start telling you things, but you have to establish a place of trust with that client. You're not going to betray that trust, but you also have the interest of their manager or the CEO of the company. You have their best interests and you can bring those into each other without betraying the trust of this person or the executive. And it's, it's kind of a wonderful, interesting thing. It's like I use my degree in psychology every single day, and that's part of it. And the next question I have is, how do you find extra time to work out and stay motivated? Asking for a friend. I get this question a lot. I work out with a lot of 
young moms, they, you know, they just don't, you can't just tell them, oh, just get up before your child and go work out. No, it doesn't work that way. You have to balance it and you have to be really kind to yourself. You have to be flexible as a young mom finding time. And actually with anybody, for example, I'm training an older gentleman. He's in his 70s. And he told me the other day he didn't feel like setting goals. And I'm like, that's because your goals are too broad. So what happens is people set these goals of losing weight or getting this much fitness or doing strength training routine and getting it all set out. That's too broad and not specific enough. This gentleman had an injury. And so he was not able to work out like he used to. And he didn't think that working out was a priority. I told him, I said, okay, your injury is in your lower body. So we're going to work your upper body. On top of that, you're going to train these muscles in different ways than you're used to. We're going to work the lower back on the lower back machine. We're going to work our stomach on the ab machine. And we're going to do the cardio that's just the arms. And he's like, oh, I never thought of that. I said, right, we need to get 30 minutes of movement in a day and let's do that. And then we also incorporated red light therapy, which makes him feel so much better. And then also the hydro massage. So I told him, I said, that can complete your whole workout. And so now he's got a different frame of mind. Our goal is more specific and it's just for the week. And then next week we'll reiterate that. And next week we'll reiterate that. And that's how I work with my clients. So we have one coaching call a week and we set their goals very specifically depending on what they're going through. And we're kind to ourselves and we're flexible. That's how you stay motivated. That's how you stay committed to your fitness routine. Despite being a busy mom or a busy parent or a busy person in general. All right, the next question is, how are your boys doing now and how old are they? Yeah, so my boys are really, really handsome guys. So I get this question a lot, especially from the younger girls. So my boys are 28 and 26 and they are both doing absolutely phenomenally well despite the trauma they've been put through. Um, their dad is mentally ill. He's definitely um, an undiagnosed bipolar. And I've known that for years. I let go of a lot of different things as a parent to let him have his power trip that he had. Well, today we've been divorced for 24 years and my boys now see the dysfunction that he caused. In fact, and this breaks my heart, they're seeing that their childhood was a lie with him. And even though deep down inside, I wanted that, I wanted them to see that, and I wanted them to give me that validation that, hey, you were right to step back. You were right. My dad was living a lie. It still hurts. It still hurts. It's a mental illness. It's like, um, the way I look at mental health is different from society in general, which is not very good. Um, mental health has a stigma on it. Um, mental health is like, it's just like physical health, but you can't see, you can't see the causes, especially with bipolar disorder. So bipolar disorder, mm, my ex lives mostly in manic. And so in manic, they definitely don't want to see the dysfunction that's going on in there. And then you can't physically see it like it's a cancer. You can see the tumor. You can see it growing and growing and growing. And we need to get it out. Well, the older we get, the worse our mental health will get if we're not careful. And that's what we're seeing now. And it breaks my boy's heart. But I have to go back to the fact that I believe this, 
And it's been said in the book, Embraced by the Light. I will have a link to that in the show notes and description below. But Betty Eady wrote that book and she had an afterlife experience. And when she had this afterlife experience, she was like, let's just call it heaven. But it wasn't heaven. But you know what I'm saying. She was in heaven and she saw our maker, our creator talking to people about their lives. And actually, we pick the stuff that we're going going to go through, the illnesses we're going to have, our parents. And it's all due to lessons that we learn in life. And I'm explaining this as best I can. And I never experienced this, but I have felt it tremendously. And it gave me a lot of peace in knowing that what I went through had a purpose. It had a bigger purpose than was bigger than me. And when I let go of everything and let it just go and realize I picked my ex because I could help him possibly, maybe just by having children with him, it's making him see he is mentally ill, but he's not really facing it. Not only that, but the person that he's with, who he was was his secretary while we were married, so you do the math and figure it out. But they're t- still together to this day. We've been divorced 24 years, so they've probably been together 26, 25 years. And in that time, she's also very mentally ill without an awareness of what's going on. Um, I would say hers is more narcissism, but I am not saying this from a place of judgment. I'm saying this from a place of experience and what she's done in my children's life, especially today, they now see it. And also what she's done in their father's life, which is so, so traumatic. But we can't see it physically, but it's there. And it's very sad. One final point I want to say about my boys and also that book, Embraced by the Light. One thing she did see was is she saw mothers praying. And she said that a mother's prayer is the most powerful prayer of all. And that they were like going up like fast light as opposed to just a regular prayer. I'm probably botching this, but I know from experience that my prayers were answered and my prayers were heard. And they were very powerful, especially for my children. Just going to leave that there. If you like today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and hit that little bell so you never miss a video from us. Let's get back into the episode. All right. Next question. What is your favorite supplement you are taking right now? How has it impacted you? And what do you recommend for better sleep? So those are really three questions, but I'm going to try to answer them quickly. My favorite supplement is EstroPro. And what that supplement does is it controls your hormones. And my supplement lady has actually put young girls on this supplement to balance out their hormones. It's not just for menopause or da-da-da-da-da. So one thing about my fitness routine and the way I've worked out for years And the studies I've done in continuing education is I don't have any menopausal symptoms. If Now, Eddie may disagree with that, but (laughs) I don't. I really, really don't. I don't have hot flashes. I don't have mood swings. I don't have um, uh, excess weight gain. I have normal weight gain that happens as you age. And I truly believe it's from two things. It's from my supplementation. And then also from my um, my workout routines. So Estro Pro, you can I think you can buy it on Amazon. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm a big proponent of buying my supplements from my supplement store. I live in Texas, and my supplement guy tells me that when you buy it from Amazon, you have to go through this protocol, and they have to remove certain things that certain states don't allow. So you're better off buying your supplements from your local supplement guy. And I'm not talking about GNC. 
GNC is like Amazon. They're regulated and they have to watch what they do. And they're a national company. I don't know this for sure. I'm just just throwing this out there from my experience. So there's that. And then let's see what else was the question. That's how it's impacted me. <laughs> and then what do you recommend for better sleep? Holy crap, this is a great question because this month, in the month of August, my calendar is all about healthy sleep. Every month I send out a calendar to the team for corporate wellness and this calendar just has daily little tips on getting better sleep. So I recommend exercise daily, the movement of 30 minutes a day. It's going to help you sleep better. But the supplements I recommend for sleep are definitely magnesium, take it at night, yeah, you could take it in the morning, but what magnesium does is it calms the nervous system. So you want to take it at night. And then also I'm starting this new supplement and I can't remember what it's called, but it's a little drink that helps with sleep. And I just love it. One thing about me is there's two things you don't mess with, my sleep and my sleep. I know how to sleep really, really good. I believe it keeps me young. And I know about sleep. I know how to help you sleep better. I know how to, what supplements to take and how to help, how it helps you sleep. Now, everybody's different. And I've recommended my melatonin to some people. And some people tell me they can't wake up the next morning. Um, and Eddie's one of those people. He doesn't like taking melatonin because it makes him still more sleepy the next day. So everybody's different and supplements are different for everybody. And on my products that I recommend, I always mention the side effects that come along with those. So you want to pay attention to that. You want to know your body and you want to know how it affects your body. And to me, that's very important. Anything you put into your body, you want to know how it affects you. But those are what I'm going to recommend for uh, good quality sleep. And I'll have links to all of that in the show notes and description below. Be sure to check that out. I follow you for reality transurfing. What does that have to do with wellness or corporate wellness? So reality transurfing is a book that I started reading in 2018 and dramatically changed my life. I've read it cover to cover. It's a very thick Hold on, let me go get it. So this is Reality Transurfing. It's a phenomenal book. It's very, very thick. But what I like about Reality Transurfing is I could open it up to any page and I would instantly find an answer to maybe something I'm struggling with at the time or maybe something that I just need to talk about or something that I need to think about. And what I coach in reality transurfing are pendulums, which are just thought structures that everybody thinks that are very contagious and only want your energy. Oh, those are a, a very interesting topic, especially right now with politics going on in the United States. It's crazy. Pendulums are in full swing everywhere. And then I also coach on finding advantage in everything. That's something that Reality Transurfing teaches. We are just guests on this planet and we should act that way. Should is a dirty word, so don't say should. But when you act like a guest on this planet, you don't take things for granted. You find advantage in everything that happens to you, which is very helpful, by the way. And it shifts your reality to a better place. I also coach about outer intention, which is just God's intention, the universe's intention. And when you align with outer intention, with what is best for you and your intentions, everything shifts and your reality shifts. I also uh, coach about reducing importance because when we make something very, very important in our life, I have to have this. I have to have this way. What happens is excess potential comes in and sweeps you off of that important stance. And when that happens, it unbalances your life. So for example, I reduced importance in my role as a mother because I was going through 
so much drama. And I did this before I found Reality Transurfing. And I did this back when I read the book in 2006. I believe it was maybe 2007. I read the book A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. Those books parallel. And the book A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle is my absolute favorite book. And it's my number one on my read list because it taught me to reduce importance, to reduce attachment to things. And I'm not saying not be attached to things. For example, I'm very attached to Rusty. He's like my best friend in the world. When something happens to him, I'm not going to be happy about it. But I am grateful for everything I've had with him and When I hear somebody say, I'm not getting a dog because I don't want to get attached to him and I don't want to go through that pain again. Well, that's part of having a dog. And that's something that you've just got to come to terms with. And I've had so much time with him that I'm so grateful for that because, I mean, 13 years is a long time. Me and him have been through a lot together. And so I reduce importance on my attachment to things on my attachment to what it was to be a mom. And when I did that, everything shifted. And I've actually gotten in touch with my kids spiritually. And when I did that, I knew a lot more than I did as the person who was attached to, I'm Kyle and Cody's mom. And y'all all have to know that. Who cares? You know what? Who cares? And when I let go of all that attachment, oh my gosh, my life shifted in a big, dramatic, drastic way that I will never go back to that. And I reduce importance on everything, not to the extent that I don't want it and I don't have to have it, but to the extent that I trust the process. Yes, for sure. And I talked about that a lot earlier on my YouTube channel, if you go back to some of my earlier videos, that's what I was talking about because that's what I was going through four years ago, five years ago during the pandemic. And I talked a lot about that. So let's go to the next question because this is getting long. How long is it? Almost 30 minutes. All right. My last question is what TV shows are you watching right now and why? And I get asked this question a lot because The TV shows I watch are going to sound superficial, but I watch them for specific reasons. I've always watched The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. And the reason I watch them is because I follow reality Steve and he spoils them. If I could know the score of a football game before the football game is over, yeah, I'm weird. I want to know that. If I could read a book, I will read the end of it to find out what happens. And I watch some shows on um, on Netflix that are reality shows, and I will go find out who's together and who's what before it's even over because I'm watching it after the fact. Anyways, back to The Bachelorette, which is airing right now. I'm watching it because one of Kyle's friends that he went to high school with, and he's really good friends with this guy, and actually one of Kyle's real good friends who I'm close to as well, was one of his best friends. And I just love the psychology of it. The Bachelorette is 100% producer-induced drama. That's all it is. Because you're not going to watch it if you... And actually, The Bachelorette is my least favorite show because 30 guys are not going to go after one girl. It's just not in their DNA for guys to chase one girl. It works the other way around. It's just in our DNA that a woman or the feminine energy is going to be more attached to one guy. Whereas the masculine energy is going to be attracted to lots of girls. Yeah, it's just hate me, love me. I'm not worried about it. But... What happens is, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but this guy goes really far in this season. And as a woman who could possibly know his mother or my children, could, my boys could be on the show, 
my heart goes out to him. And I was watching one of the episodes last night and I could hear my son talking in it. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. And that's not producer induced drama, although they told him that he needed to talk about this to build the connection. But the connection that they built, the psychology in that is just, oh, I love it. And I geek out about it. Another TV show that I watched that's kind of gone to the deep end and I'm not real happy with is Big Brother. But I watch it because of the social psychology in it. And I and I want to analyze the social psychology that's going on in there. But I feel like it's kind of gotten to where they plant people in this show where they're producer-induced drama. and. That doesn't appeal to me. And actually, I feel like all of these reality shows are producer-induced drama because I'll go back to this. You're not going to watch it if everybody's getting along and everything's fine and there's no drama. So they have to induce some drama for it to be entertaining. And that's fine. I'll watch it for that. And I see it for what it is because I do follow Reality Steve. And Reality Steve breaks it down. He even breaks down Big Brother and he called out the fact that Angela was on The Price is Right. She was on Dr. Phil. That is a huge flag for me to go, oh, man, this girl loves her some drama. I don't like the way she treated Matt um, because Matt is old enough to be one like my son. And you talk to my son like that and I'm coming after you at some point. Yeah. Or let me change that because that's reducing importance there. And that's exactly what I did with my ex's wife, the stepmom. I let her hang herself because that's exactly what she did. And that's exactly what happens. When you reduce importance, let's go back to that. When you reduce importance and let it go, it just will, you'll hang yourself. You'll hang yourself because when you reduce importance, you get in touch spiritually with the real connection that's going on with your higher self, with who you really are. And when you do that, that just shines through and the other person has karma. Like Wayne Dyer says, how you treat people is their I I can't remember the quote. I'm not even going to say it because I can't remember it, but it's really good. And um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the screen right here and I will have it in the link in the show notes and description below because it's good. And that's what happens when you reduce importance and you let go and karma gets them. Karma gets them. That's really cool. All right. So that's my episode for today. I trust that you found it helpful. If you know somebody who could benefit from this, please share it with them. And until next time, I will see you next time. Peace out and namaste.